So now we're going to take a closer look inside the hive and we're going to start from the top and work our way down. So this is obviously the roof here. Do you want to yeah. say a bit yeah, about Yeah, say the, a few uh, bits about the roof. So obviously, again, this adds to its beauty. It's a beautiful pitched roof. Uh, nicely chamfered cedar on the top. Again, it's entirely cedar. Some hives um, that we've seen out there, or I've seen out there, actually use ply underneath, which over time accumulates moisture and it actually warps and then looks very unsightly and it can go rotten as well. This is solid cedar, both underneath and on top here of this the metal roof. At the front here, we've got a cone. Uh, this offers ventilation, of course, but at the same time, it's also protecting from uh, wasps getting in to the hive, the bees are able to protect uh, and, and sort of come up here, and they can fan out, they can fan the air outside of the hive to create a better airflow. But secondly, it's also a very small gap for the bees to protect against wasps. Right, let's take a look. Okay, so that's the roof. Uh, now we've taken the roof off. We can, you may or may not be able to see. Um, we've got underneath here. We've got the inner parts of the hive. These are still the outer walls. So these are the lifts. Dan's going to take those away. Uh, and that's going to show us what's inside beyond that cavity. So, exposed now is the inside of the hive and the first thing we come to is the crown board. Uh, it's a fairly pretty important part of the hive. Um, this obviously stops the bees from being able to go up into the roof space um, uh, and start building as well. Um, it also keeps uh, the heat down inside the hive as well. So it's a really, really, really important part of the hive um, to sit between a, a super, which is this part here, with the honey stores inside, and the roof space. On the top here we have the crown boards. Um, a lot of the time during the summer, most people will leave them off um, for additional ventilation. It does allow bees to get into the roof space, um, but most of the time those bees, their objective, their only objective is to ventilate the hive. Um, they, they've got enough, provided they've got enough space beneath. Um, they tend to be okay and they're not likely to go above. These are a one-way system for the bees, um, which means if you do trap any bees in the roof uh, or under it when you put it back on, uh, they will be able to get back through. However, they do stop the bees from coming back up. So we usually recommend you, these are included. You get two Porter bee escapes when you buy uh, a crown board or the hive in its entirety. Um, so you may want to remove one. And again, you can use uh, that gap there to uh, place feed or feeder on top. Okay, so that's our crown board. So we take the crown board away, and that reveals underneath the first uh, tier of the hive, which is the super. So here we have the runners on which the frames sit. This is a shallow uh, box by comparison to the brood, and this just stores um, honey. So this is food stores for the bees, uh, in which here, in here you'd have shallow frames with foundation, uh, this would take 11 frames and a dummy board. Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm thinking national there. It actually takes 10 frames and a dummy board on this one. Um, it's, it's slightly smaller. I know, well, they found it funny. It's slightly smaller than the national hive, but uh, we will come on to that in a later video. So that's our super. Uh, do you want to talk about the brood, Dan? Yeah, I can do. Yeah. Is it worth taking the entrance off? Shall we take that? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So that's the bottom lift <laughs> that has the entrance yep. to the actual hive. And here we have the brood box. Now on this hive we have a 14 by 12 because the standard brood box for a WBC is 5,000 uh, cells. No, is it 45? So it holds 45 cells, yes. which is 5,000 less than the national. Um, 45,000? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the brood box, this 14 by 12, allows 50,000, which is the um, capacity. Same as the standard uh, national. national brood. So. And of course, without, I guess, we mentioned, did you mention this? This is obviously the brood, which does mean this is where the queen resides. Um, so on top of this, we would have a queen excluder to stop the queen coming up into the super. Um, this is where the queen will lay all her eggs and this is where most of the workers will be really, yep. tending to the queen and tending to all the eggs. Yeah. So the advantage um, of, of using uh, a slightly deeper brood on the WBC, as Dan mentioned, it does give you the additional 5,000 cells 
um, which does allow the queen that extra space to lay eggs. Um, it also reduces uh, the, the bees, uh, or it takes away the need to swarm based on congestion, just that little bit. So it gives you a little bit more time. Um, so yeah, generally uh, we would say, we'd probably recommend taking a 14 by 12 brood uh, with a WBC. It's nothing to say you can't use a standard brood in the WBC, um, but um, say just to give you that little bit more space or your queen that little bit more space is probably a good idea to go with the 14 by 12. And sometimes if your bees weren't doing too well in the year and they're a smaller swarm, you would want them to be in a smaller hive yeah. to be uh, yeah, more Yeah, so secure. the standard brood for the WBC would be a good over winter yeah. uh, box and yeah. maybe in the summer when your brood expands uh, have one of these Swap on standby. Over to the uh, 14 by 12. So if you've got, yeah, if you can, best of both, take both. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that brings us to the floor, which is um, pretty self-explanatory really, very much like the roof. Um, however, just, well, just the same as the roof, it's beautiful in itself um, and it complements the hive really, really nicely. Um, we've got the open mesh floor, of course, as standard, um, which allows obviously for ventilation, principally ventilation, but also allows for your varroa mites to drop through the bottom. And at the back of the hive here, or one of these here, is it this one? <laughs> Here we go, well done Dan. We have an inspection board or inspection tray um, which does allow you to put, so what you would do with this is to put it underneath this mesh floor um, at certain times of the year where you want to know about either activity of the hive, you want to see the varroa drop um, and see where the treatments are working. So that sits very nicely at the back there. Again, it's something you don't necessarily need in all year, um, but it does. It is integral. It does come with the floor. Um, you've also got your landing board, of course, which is really, really nice. That's um, something really nice to watch when the bees are coming in, rather than them just going to the hole at the entrance of the hive and maybe scrapping about and dropping down and maybe not being able to get in. It does allow the bees who aren't the best at, at landing. Most landings, if you watch bees in slow motion, it's they're very much crash landings, and it's quite often that they will maybe fall or want to go out back to fly again. So this allows them to crawl back up into the hive, which is rather nice. Um, it's also worth mentioning, um, one of the things uh, that you really need to make sure with the WBC is that when we, we put it all back together, um, you make sure that all of these pieces fit together properly because one of the, the risks with a WBC is that you may get wasps, um, uh, which will rob the hive. Uh, being able to get in through the small holes. So it's very important here at Mantle Farm, we actually make sure before all of the hives go out um, that they are actually checked and there aren't any holes for anything to get through. In fact, um, we make doubly sure. One of the reasons we've now decided to go just assemble because um, you know sometimes people aren't the best at putting things together. I know I'm not uh, brilliant at woodwork. Dan, you're pretty good, but I, I'm not. And I know I'd probably get it wrong. So. I'd rather buy it assembled, knowing it's right, and I, then I don't have to worry about it. Especially if I need a new hive, worst thing, last thing I want to really do is be assembling one. I want to be able to just get it, put it in situ, uh, and get the bees inside. So that's the WBC hive. I don't know what you think about this, but personally, it's my favourite one. I know it's a little bit more expensive, but it pays off for the look. That's all I want. But admittedly, if you ended up having about 10 to 20 hives, you wouldn't particularly want to be going through each one, having to take the lifts off, yeah. plus the supers. Yeah, I think it's it ideal. Get quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think it's ideal if you've got because a, a lot of people try and just keep two colonies, maybe one, two colonies. Um, that's absolutely fine. Uh, the cost, I mean, yeah, you just get so much more woodwork involved in this, and um, they're very, very intricate hives, really, um, but beautiful, beautiful at the same time. So hopefully, um, by outlining and, and sort of disassembling the hive, there we've actually made managed to explain some of the pros and cons to the WBC hive. Thank you for watching. Thank you.